Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics and we are in section 12.2. Section 12 has to do, or chapter 12 has to do with analytical, some analytical geometry. And this section has to do with the parabola. And this is one of those topics that occurs, I think we teach it in middle school to our algebra students in America here. This is one of those things that just drives people batty, okay? So the parabola arises when you have an equation of the form y equals x squared. Okay, remember that analytical geometry, we're trying to find how to graph for some expression involving x and y equals some constant. We wanna find a quick way to graph these things without having to go through all the points and calculate them each time. So let's drop a table, okay? So we're gonna have x over here and we're gonna have y over here. So when x is zero, y is zero. When x is one, y is one. When x is two, y is four. x is three, y is nine. When x is four, is 16. And when x is the inverse of it, so minus one is going to be one, minus two is going to be four, minus three is going to be nine, and minus four is gonna be 16. So we draw this out like this. And I am not being precise by any stretch of the imagination. So one, one, two, four, and it's gonna shoot up like this. One, one, two, four, and then it's gonna go down. It's gonna kind of level out, and then it's gonna shoot back up, and then just curve kind of, up. it's kind of like a curved shape, okay? If you want an exact picture of a parabola, you can go to the internet and find it. I'm not gonna draw it. It's in the book too, obviously. You can do that as well. All right, now, what happens when we have the graph y equals x minus one squared? This is the idea behind this whole chapter that I want you to absorb into your mind, okay? We have already graphed y equals x squared. We are never gonna have to do this ever again because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this graph and we're gonna move it around and we're gonna make it look different. Okay, so what does this say? Well, so we would really like this graph to look like this, some x prime squared, right? Well, what would x prime be? x prime would be x minus one, okay? So let's draw what the x prime graph axis looks like. So over an x prime land, when x prime is zero, x is minus one, okay? So in x prime land, we're gonna go over here, and this is gonna be the new y-axis, okay? All right? Okay, so when x prime is zero, x is minus one. When x prime is one, then x is, um, hold on, let's make sure this is right. When x prime is zero, what does x have to be? x has to be one. I did it wrong. Let's move it over this way. See, this is why you have to be careful. It is not this one here. When x prime is zero, then x is one. When x prime is one, then x is two. And when x prime is minus one, x is zero. So this is where the x prime axis starts, okay? So what we're gonna do is take this parabola that we just drew perfectly, because we're awesome at drawing. We're gonna do the same thing. It's gonna touch down there and it's gonna go up. So basically everything just shifts to the right by one. That's what the minus one in here means. And remember in the, in the, the, uh, the graph of the line, we found that when we do like y minus something, that it shifts it up by one, okay? Indeed, does that work for parabolas? Can we do that? The answer is yes, you can. So if I had the graph like this, so we had y is equal to um, x minus some constant a squared, and then we're gonna subtract or add b, okay? We just move that b to the other side, so my y minus b is equal to x minus a squared, and so the new parabola is gonna have its point that touches at the origin. That's gonna be at the coordinates a comma b. Okay, that's all we need to do. Y minus b is equal to x minus a squared. The new coordinate, new zero, is at a comma b. Okay, so we just move this parabola so that that zero, zero point goes to a comma b, and that's the new parabola we're gonna graph, okay? What if we multiply, okay? So we're gonna think of the form where we have y minus b is equal to some constant times x minus a squared. What does this constant do, okay? Well, let's draw ourselves a little graph, a little chart. So we're gonna have x and y. Actually, we're gonna have x prime and y prime where 
y prime is equal to y minus b and x prime is equal to x minus a, okay? So when x is, let's just do this, minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two, then y prime is gonna be four c, c, zero, c, and four c. Okay, so what's going on here? We, we, let's actually look at minus one half. So this is gonna be four times one quarter, this is, and if we go to one half as well, it's gonna be four times one quarter, one over four. What's happening? Well, the graph is kind of squishing, okay? Um, so the points that it used to be, let's see if I can make sense of this. So if the graph used to be like this, now it's gonna go up faster by a factor of four, okay? So basically by, by multiplying by four, it looks squishy, but really what's happening is all these points are going up by times four, okay? So what used to be one is now four, what used to be one quarter is now one, all right? So that is what the graph does, okay? The, there, so let's take an example. So the example is we have two y minus x squared minus four x plus six is equal to zero. This graph looks nothing like that. At least this form doesn't look anything like that, unless we can make it look like that. So we're gonna try to find an x minus a. So in this case, if we were to say x squared plus four x plus, I don't know, four? Does that sound right? Then we know that that would be equal to x plus two squared. The problem is we have this plus four here, there's not one there, right? So let's just go ahead and add it in. So we have minus x squared, minus four x, minus four, and we have to add four to keep a balance, plus six is equal to zero, so we have two y in the front. So two y minus x plus two squared plus 10 is equal to zero. Let's continue down here. So now we have two y plus 10 is equal to x plus two squared. And we got this beautiful x plus two that's very similar to that. Now we have this naughty two. So we have y plus five is equal to one half x plus two squared. Now we got our c and we just convert that to that. So we know that b is equal to minus five, a is equal to minus two, and c is equal to one half, okay? So this is everything we need to graph that parabola. Let me just draw it over here really quick for you. So the new center is minus two minus five. So that's a new origin and then it's gonna be squished down by half. So it's gonna go over one and up one half, over two and up two, over three and up four, okay? So it's gonna look basically like this. It's gonna be a little flatter than a regular parabola. And if I was being careful on a piece of graph paper, I would actually map those coordinates out. Pretty simple stuff, right? All that complicated equation stuff turns out to be pretty easy if you just put it in the form where you can recognize it. What happens when we have a different sort of parabola we have an equation like x equals y squared equals zero. Notice that the y term is squared, x is not squared. And so we write this x equals y squared, and those points are gonna look like this. Just basically it's a parabola out this way to the right, okay? And we can do the same kind of situation here. So the example is x minus y squared plus two y plus five is equal to zero, okay? So let's complete the square here. Over here we're gonna say y squared minus two y and then we want, um, what's, so it's gonna be y minus one. y minus one squared would be a plus one at the end. Okay, so we need to have x minus y squared plus two y minus one plus one to keep it zero plus five is equal to zero. So x minus y minus one squared plus six is equal to zero. So x plus six is equal to y minus one squared. Okay, so we have, our a is equal to minus six, our b is equal to one, and so the new graph is going to be at minus six comma one. No, minus six is over here. Minus six comma one is a new center and the graph is just gonna be as normal, okay? So this is minus six comma one, okay? Pretty simple stuff. There's really not much else to say. Um, if you do study Typically, a course like this would go more in depth into parabolas. We'd calculate the focal points, things like that. 
However, uh, he feels that it's much better to leave that for optics or engineering when you actually engage the parabola as a shape that's useful for something. So he's not gonna do that yet. The exercises are fairly straightforward. Uh, using the techniques I taught you, it should be rather trivial to quickly graph these parabolas. Um, you shouldn't be going through individual points. Um, you should be moving the origin and stretching things out using the stretch thing. And there is a, a point of intersection. Oh, problems 5 through 24 give you a chance to exercise and complete the square and things like that. And then 25 is going to give you a chance to find the intersection of parabolas and lines. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day or weekend or whatever it is. Take care and bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video on Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. You can find the series on the left, and on the right you can click to support my channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.